Warm greetings from Creative Hub Tallinn. Welcome to the second seminar by Education Nation called The Finnest Way of Learning at Home. During today's webinar, we will try to find answers to parents' most pressing questions, tips and concrete examples of how to organize distant learning at home. We have five experts today with us. Marilis Sultz, headmaster of Tallinn Art Gymnasium and a parent. Hello, Marilis. Johani Koivuvita, co-founder and head coach of EduCrafter. Tere, tere. Hello. Mart Aro, co-founder of Dream Apply and N8 Nordic Education Tech Forum. Hey. Linda Mannila, parent, entrepreneur, researcher and in DigiSmart. Hello, Linda. Hi there. And Birgit Lau, CEO of Foundation Innove. Hi, Birgit. Hello. Each speaker will have about five to seven minutes of speaking, after which we also we will have a Q&A session. And for this, for all of you who are watching us uh, through YouTube or Facebook, you may also have a question during this session. Please head over to Facebook and find a group named Remote Learning Education Nation. And submit your question there or also under the event post where you watch the video. Let's move on to today's webinar topic. Our first speaker is Marilis Sultz. She's also a parent and is headmastering Tallinn's art gymnasium. Marilis, tell us, how have the past few weeks been for Estonian schools? Hello, everybody. Uh, so just to let you know that uh, I'm on the same side as you all parents. I'm uh, having at home a second grader uh, who's a boy and uh, thinks that this uh, uh, special situation is a conspiracy and that the teachers have never taught that much that he has to learn at home. And a fourth grader, a girl who just does everything uh, like magic and shows me that uh, she has mastered everything for only two hours. So completely different stories. Uh, but right now, I would like to then uh, share uh, what we are doing at our school and how the teachers are really feeling uh, and how they are coping. Uh, I have been a school head for five years and uh, teachers at our school uh, are with an average age of 35 years. So not all teachers have children and uh, some teachers are quite old, so they are already grandmothers. Uh, and are afraid really of the health situation here in Estonia. So can I have my slides, please? And uh, so I will uh, show you a little bit how we are working. Um, this is a slide with a lot of information, uh, but I would like to say that right from uh, the end of uh, February, uh, when uh, we heard that there was a first COVID-19 uh, uh, situation in Estonia, uh, found out, uh, I started to communicate with the parents and the teachers uh, twice uh, a week and told them what is happening uh, in the health situation because not everybody uh, reads the same media uh, or understands the media the same way. So uh, the most important thing was uh, communication to the teachers, pupils and parents. And we, as we have, uh, I think, six nationalities in our school, uh, the communication also had to be in different languages. So we translated all the information into Russian and English. And then it, uh, when needed, then uh, we have a few Italian parents uh, and uh, Spanish parents, then uh, they translated uh, between themselves uh, the information because not all parents also speak English. So we, how we started to help the teachers uh, as they just uh, found out uh, on Friday that on Monday they will be uh, teaching from home. Uh, some teachers, as I told, are older and haven't uh, used so much digital technology, although we have had digital days and other uh, project days, which are like for uh, made uh, for distant learning, uh, and we have practiced it before. But uh, maybe the teachers uh, haven't used it uh, with the full potential. Uh, and so we started with 15-minute uh, talks, uh, so to call check-ins uh, via Zoom with every teacher. My first uh, three days were full uh, from nine to five with only uh, 30 minute uh, breaks of talking to teachers, everybody one-on-one -on -one asking, how are you doing? What are you afraid of? Uh, how you, will you make your learning happen? What do you think you will never do? What do, are you interested in uh, finding out more? 
And uh, after that, uh, the next three days, I took my substitute uh, and talked with all the teachers. The next day, the special needs coordinator talked with all the teachers and already tried to find out which uh, pupils were not learning at all. And now uh, this week, we have a person who is in charge of communication in our school. She's talking with all the teachers. And next week, we will start then with co-vision meetings. Uh, so there will be not one-on-one -on -one teachers, but five to six teachers or even seven in one group and uh, sharing their experience and what they are using. So I think this uh, is making uh, the learning happen uh, really well uh, because uh, teachers uh, understand what are the school, uh, uh, what is the school, what does the school want? As the ministry is saying, uh, uh, please don't uh, grade the students, uh, like just give feedback. Then uh, this is one of the biggest uh, difficulties for the teachers because they are thinking that they are losing uh, control of teaching uh, when they are not. Uh, grading uh, the work and so uh, when we like put up a table in google uh, drive that you can only ask once a day uh, like three works uh, from different subjects from ninth grade then the other teachers were who are having lessons at the same time what do, how will i know that they are learning i'm saying you have to trust the child you have to uh, make the learning happen in that way that when you ask uh, maybe not on tuesday the information you want to know but on friday that the friday information must be made up of the information the child has learned also on tuesday so this is a really difficult uh, thing for teachers to cope with that they have to trust that the child will learn uh, the material themselves if they know that they have to substitute or, or sub, uh, like not substitute, but to give in a work uh, on Friday also for the materials learned before. So I think this is what we are like trying to tell the teachers that it's okay, uh, don't worry, uh, and uh, don't you don't have to know everything what is happening on every minute of the day. Uh, the next thing for teachers are the um, video uh, lessons, which are really hard for them to also. Uh, make happen uh, because they are afraid of showing their face, showing their kitchen, uh, showing uh, their um, uh, their competence or incompetence of uh, giving video lessons. Uh, uh, but I see that that is also changing as we are holding all the seminars and meetings uh, via Zoom. So they are like practicing it, practicing and practicing and getting more acquainted with it and are more happy and uh, confident of using it. Uh, and the third thing uh, the teachers uh, are really uh, afraid of in Estonia, as we are a 200-year nation of education, uh, that the children will not learn. Uh, but as we have this uh, vision for 2035 in Estonia, that uh, all children should understand why they are learning and uh, for whom they are learning, uh, whether for teacher or, or their mother or for themselves, and so I think this is a great opportunity for uh, parents, uh, children, and the teachers uh, to try it out and uh, see that it really works if uh, we, like as heads of the school, support the teachers and the teachers start to trust the children. So I think that is my short point for this uh, starting session. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, before moving forward, I would like to ask, uh, what about this situation? Is it uh, causing to re rethink the entire schooling system here in Estonia? Can now, are teachers more thinking that more can be done remotely and this is causing to reinvent or restructure the entire way we do the schooling? Uh, I think uh, you don't have to reinvent it. It has uh, all been written down in the curricula of Estonian education, but nobody has really used it uh, that much uh, because they don't have to, because they are doing it like uh, they learned and like their grandmother learned. So a little bit, they, uh, we are using the same methods over and over again, although we have uh, uh, computers and digital blackboards, but uh, the learning process is really the same. So I think this is a wonderful way to, uh, yes, rethink your own teaching, but really uh, not to rethink the curricula or the way we as uh, educators want to teach children and the objectives we have, we want to reach. Thank you, Marilis. Our next speaker has Thank joined you. us from Finland. Johani Koivovita is a Finnish teacher. Hi, Johani, again. 
Tell us, can you confirm what Marilis told us about Estonia or are things done differently now in Finland? Um, I'd say overall uh, process is, uh, is the same. So there are a lot of communication, a lot of uh, guidelines um, from uh, the national level to the school level and then in, in school the, the headmasters and teachers communicated that out. And um, I can see similar kind of guidelines that uh, Marelis was just showing us uh, also happening in Finland. So, go ahead and show us how we can do better. <laughs> well, let's see. Uh, so, hello everyone. Uh, I'm here to represent uh, our company, EduCrafter. Been co-founding it and working there as the head coach. Uh, in the field, we do coaching and consulting uh, of um, for many different organizations and, and customers. And uh, uh, our coaching programs are all a combination of team learning and design thinking uh, processes. Um, my background is that I'm a Finnish. Uh, I think we lost a question, uh, a contact with Johanny for a while, so we will uh, continue with Mert who is an education innovator and education technology entrepreneur. And for all of those who are watching us online, I remind you that you can submit your questions for our speakers today. Head over to Education Nation Facebook group to do so. Mert, an education innovator and education technology entrepreneur, uh, has this situation affected our technology companies? Have your soli solutions gotten more popular? Yes, absolutely. The education uh, innovation has become very important uh, now, and uh, we have uh, seen a thousand percent increase in many, many cases uh, with solutions that are uh, being used now in schools. So, uh, so the education technology companies are working very hard and uh, also trying to make their best to support the schools in the today's situation. Um, a lot of companies have uh, make, made their solutions for free to use um, for the schools and, and parents that, uh, that could have uh, no access otherwise. So uh, that's, uh, that's what I'm very happy about. And um, maybe let's have a look at the few slides and the solutions as well that are available today for the parents. So, uh, so the parents could take advantage of these uh, possibilities. Um, a bit about my background, <clears throat> I have a very simple dream to enable access to high quality education to everybody globally and uh, to make this happen I've uh, set up uh, three non-profit organizations and uh, four companies in education development as well, uh, serving uh, millions of people across the world. But uh, together with a bunch of uh, edtech or education technology companies, we started an uh, an initiative to um, collect together uh, solutions from uh, from Estonia and also the Northern Europe here. And um, uh, I'm going to go to the website that we've set up uh, for the solutions that are available for free now uh, for parents. So um, um, feel free to to go to the website as well. It's called education-nation.99math.com. And uh, here you can see the solutions that are made for free at the moment and um, in the presentation we'll, we can have a, a quick look at a few of them as well so, so you could use them um, to make your child's studying or learning more more interesting. So I'm switching back to the slides uh, now. Yes, can we have the slides for Mert online as well? Great, yes. go ahead please. So let's, uh, let's have a look at one of them. This is uh, 99 Math is a mathematics learning um, uh, game. And uh, the fun part of it is that you can have competitions between children or also, also internationally to do this. Uh, let's go to the next slide so we can see a video about this as well. Can you comment, Merit, at the same time, what we are seeing here? Yes. So uh, what you're seeing here is um, it's uh, using uh, calculators to calculate by heart uh, 
the questions that the system is making for them. And also it's possible to, to look at um, um, the statistics or, or the results of, of the game at the same time live. And uh, it's become very popular among the teachers as well uh, to, to do something uh, more fun and more engaging with the kids. Um, it's actually quite interesting that you can make mathematics uh, engaging and fun. Let's go further. So I uh, chose this uh, solution because uh, uh, it's a very simple way to uh, to learn how to code. Let's go to the next slide so we can have a look at the video as well. And uh, the goal of this tool or app is to help kids learn um, the basic ideas of programming. So uh, I've actually tried this out myself. It's uh, it was quite uh, quite a lot of fun. Um, and uh, it's totally free to use. It's a uh, freeware from made by Estonian company as well. So, um, and these solutions, as I said before, are, are available for free on, on the website that we looked at before. Let's go further. Um, just to have a little bit of peek into the future, I chose uh, to show this MobiLab solution. Let's go to the next slide. Um, and a lot of parents might remember uh, there was uh, a full film called Star Trek. And in 1988 already, they showed um, this kind of room where you could, could enter and, uh, <clears throat> and then you could uh, immerse yourself into a totally different environment. And um, let's go to the next uh, slide. And here we can see straight away a solution that has built, been built for uh, for actually making more or less the same thing happen in real life. And that is now being made available for free to use as well on the same website. And uh, it's called uh, Mobilabs uh, Solution. And uh, <clears throat> as you can see, you can immerse yourself into uh, an environment and uh, look around and, and zoom in and, um, and uh, yeah, learn about uh, different environments. So let's go further with the slides. And let's, yeah, let's have the next one then. This, this is good. So this is another way that uh, we can use um, augmented reality to, um, to learn about uh, different things. Built on the same technology. <clears throat> and you can basically use only your mobile phone to uh, look at various animals or, or uh, uh, creatures or whatever actually, machines, engines. Uh, to uh, to learn about things, and uh, thanks to this platform that collaborated, uh, it's very easy now to create this kind of living um, uh, things that you can investigate uh, with augmented reality, and uh, even uh, parents or or teachers can use these these possibilities to make some things very clearly understandable for the children. So let's uh, have a look at one more uh, solution. Um, this is called Linguist, and um, let's go to the next slide straight away. Is it possible to learn a language in a fraction of the normal time? At Linguist, mm -hmm. we're convinced it is, and we're committed to. Can you comment a little bit, Matt? What's happening there? As possible. Maybe let's make it a bit longer. Learning the right words matters. Most language learning methods teach you a lot of irrelevant okay. vocabulary. We've analyzed vast amounts so of contemporary of, uh, language and teach the most frequent learn words first. Languages. Learning the words you actually use makes a huge difference. Instead of little details here and there, you see the big picture much faster. Just repeating words over and over is inefficient. There's a smarter way called spaced repetition. Linguist it's learns how well visually very words, attractive and, you and interesting. Optimal time. By fixing words so, in your memory with repetitions, uh, you have uh, much more time to learn moment, new words. Uh, what it, uh, and he's doing. Track of your progress so, and the, the goal and was uh, exactly what you so it, it's next. actually it's totally invented by a physicist who needed to go to work in CERN. And the problem that he encountered was that he needed to learn French language for And he found out that it's very difficult to do so. So, because the traditional ways of learning are often very slow. Um, and so what they built was a, a, an AI supported or artificially intelligent supported tool that helps people to learn languages. And uh, what they have achieved so far with linguists is uh, based on Tartu University's uh, study, 
that uh, people using Linguist will learn languages about 400% faster than uh, normally. And uh, I think this is uh, enough for today. I could speak for days probably about the really great uh, learning solutions that could help you in, in learning something. But uh, yeah, please uh, check out uh, the website. Um, and also we'd be super happy to learn about your feedback on the tools and, and how you like them. And uh, because uh, otherwise it's, it's a group of 30 volunteers at the moment uh, helping to bring these solutions uh, to, to the people and more than 50 solutions are already there. So um, uh, it's, it, it's always great to, to hear, hear uh, how was your experience with, with these solutions. Thanks Matt, very much. We, Matt, we have a question from the audience. Do you have already data which Estonia Netec has experienced the biggest user growth in recent weeks? Mm, I believe, I, I don't have this data, uh, but uh, based on the stories that I've heard, uh, mm, I think Clanet, uh, Clanbeat uh, is probably experiencing the biggest, uh, biggest growth so far. So. Um, I think they have uh, several thousand percent of user user growth. And, and one more, okay. And one more question here from the studio. Uh, I would like you to give a comment. Has technology sector always been booming like today? Of course, the situation is different. Or how the past weeks have 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 given the boost, especially to the creative solutions. Of course, now we are in the situation where all these tools are in, uh, in a totally new level of, of, of usage by uh, everyone around the globe. But uh, I don't know, has Estonia even had ever a 48 hour long online hackathon to create solutions or something like that, which is this situation may have caused? Can you comment a little bit as entrepreneur this question? So the hackathon example that you're uh uh, pointing out at the moment, uh, I'm really actually uh, amazed by this uh, that uh, Estonian companies, Garage 48 and uh, um, and Ministry of Economic Affairs, uh, have put their packs together uh, with Guana uh, platform, and uh, now they are organizing next week uh, the world's biggest hackathon to help uh, to overcome the the global crisis, um, and uh, they are expecting up to a million uh, participants in the hackathon. Of course, this kind of hackathon would not be possible without uh, technology. Uh, but uh, beforehand, uh, there was not so many virtual hackathons because uh, it's a lot more fun for people to come together and uh, um, and sit in the same room and uh, and, and hack things. Uh, so, um, so there is upsides and downsides of uh, using technology. And uh, this is actually probably something that uh, uh, we need to also consider when we are teaching uh, children now using uh, digital tools because uh, uh, the, the, the things that you can do in a live environment are totally different from the things that you can do or uh, are, are rather different from the things that you can do in a digital, digital environment or, or mixing these things together. Uh, so uh, it, it takes some effort uh, and, um, and I wish very, very much luck to parents and teachers to uh, to take the maximum out of these uh, possibilities that we have now. Thank you very much, Mert, for joining us to this webinar today and for your comments and input. Johanny, you are back online. You were a little bit lost uh, the internet between Estonia and Finland, but now we hear you back again. So after your introduction, it wasn't so clear anymore. Please go ahead and continue what you wanted to share us. Tore uh, alla dagasi. It's good to be back. <laughs> Uh, and I guess we're kind of walking the talk, so this can happen. I'm pretty sure teachers and parents have experienced this as well. Uh, so connection lost. Um, I'm bringing and sharing my experience as an online teacher. So I've been uh, teaching Finnish for five years to Finnish expats. Uh, this is done through a school in Finland called Kulkuri, a school uh, of distant education. And I've been their active uh, online teacher for eighth graders. Uh, and uh, I'd like to start before going into more practical uh, details uh, from uh, kind of a bigger picture. And uh, it's a challenging time for us, uh, but I'm a positive thinker and I see opportunities as well. And uh, that we have now a moment to actually um, reflect on what Marilis was also um, talking uh, trust. So the level of trust that we uh, give to our kids and, and students uh, and could we develop that uh, in this situation? 
Uh, also, you can go to the next slide. Uh, also, um, how to uh, help uh, our students uh, develop uh, internal motivation. So not uh, pushing them to do something, but help them to raise uh, their own uh, initiative or uh, having the flow uh, into doing things. And through this, uh, developing what we can call self-directed learning. So they are, the learners are leading the way. And uh, next, uh, some practical uh, things, some guidelines that you could start experimenting with uh, at home. And these are things that I've seen and also been interviewing uh, parents and students during my uh, times of, as an online teacher. So first of all, uh, it's good to set some rules. Um, and especially to time and space. So when the learning is happening at the home and uh, where exactly. And, and you can think how to create uh, sort of a safe space to really concentrate uh, on what you're doing and, and do this together. So I recommend, next slide, of uh, having a dialogue within your family. So come together and talk it through. And, and uh, while you're there, Try really to listen to each other's point of views and, and respect those and, and create this, uh, these rules together. Now, some planning is also required. And here I would suggest to start from the bigger picture first. Uh, in the school that I've been teaching, uh, some of the families uh, do a one year plan. So an annual plan first, what will happen this year? And then breaking that down into smaller pieces. Now, that might be too much for you at this moment. So maybe take the next month. What will happen in April in our family? What are the different things? And then taking that to a weekly level uh, of each individual. So that, what are my goals? What I should be do doing this week? And then to a day-to-day -day level. And when we go to the daily level, then it's good to uh, develop routines. And here's one example. Now, again, it's up to you. Uh, how do you see best uh, fitting for your situation? But one way is to start the morning by checking in. So, okay, what are your goals for today? Or what are your things that you are supposed to do today? Do you need any help with that? And, and see that uh, the, the day starts uh, in a good way. Then uh, creating a moment of focus and then um, for those messages, emails, WhatsApp, everything that might be interruptions, uh, a separate block. So not mixing those. So it may be 60 minutes of concentrating and then 30 minutes of uh, communication. Uh, it's good to have breaks as well in between and do the uh, concentration uh, at the same time and then the breaks at the same time. And then you can do something fun together, maybe eat something or some fun activities. And when you finish the day, it's good to come together again, do a reflection. Oh, did you achieve all your goals? Did you do what you decided to do? And if so, then celebrate as well. Yay, I got it all done and, and give a little praising uh, to this. So whatever the routines are, it would be good to do something regularly every day and close the day together with reflection of how was your day? Mm -hmm. Because that, that's how we, we so support also uh, that everyone starts slowly taking responsibility of, of uh, what are my things uh, day to day uh, in order to uh, get to my goals, achieve those. And there we come back to, uh, if we go back to the slides, it's a point what uh, Marilis was talking about as well. So the uh, relation between control and, and uh, trust. And in the beginning, when we start uh, uh, with this kind of setting, that we are all at home, we are all learning or working uh, online, it's new for us. And we need a lot of communication there to make it all work. And we also have the feeling of control. So maybe me as a parent want to really make sure that uh, are you doing those things that teacher told you to do? Uh, but as we move along uh, and those routines are there, then the students start taking more and more responsibility. And, and uh, when we give them the trust, uh, there doesn't have to be that much communication or control. 
So if you step down a couple of slides, then kind of showing you how this um, relation starts uh, shifting. And as a result to this, uh, for sure, uh, our students' planning skills and also putting those plans into action, so implementing those, will develop. And the feeling that I, I can, the self-efficacy, that I'm, I'm leading this process, I'm owning it. Now, just to add to a couple of uh, things, as um, something that you could do now, uh, uh, first one being that um, create a plan for yourself. So if we go forward a couple of slides. So may you be a parent or a teacher. Uh, next one, please. You could be doing uh, what we call learning contract. Now, in a simple way, this is planned for you could take the next two months. So what will happen in April and May? Where do I want to see myself uh, at the end of May? And how do I actually get there? What are the steps to, to make, uh, make me go there? So these five, five simple questions, and, and you can answer these as thoroughly as you want to. Sign it, and I recommend share it as well. And in the next slide, there's a, one idea that what you can do. In the school where I was teaching, we had a group of teachers, maybe five teachers coming together uh, to an online meeting uh, once a month. So you could have maybe parents, uh, friends of yours who are in this same situation uh, and share your best practices from home. How have you made this work for your family? And do this once a week or, or every second week, for example. And as the last thing, uh, through these activities, developing trust in yourself, uh, within your family, and also uh, to this process that it will carry you once you start doing these steps. That's Thank basically my guidelines at this moment. Thank you, Johanne, very much. And for all of those who are watching, for all this content that was so well packed to the slides, of course, you can rewatch the stream and pause the stream in the places where you can have a deeper look and reflect of those uh, slides with great input uh, that Johanne had put there. Thank Distance you. learning wouldn't be possible without parents. We have Linda Mannila from Finland joining us here. At the same time, Linda is also an entrepreneur and a researcher. Linda, how is this situation working out for you and your family? I hear a little bit something in the background as we also did the rehearsal here, which is all great. Tell us, how are you surviving as a parent and entrepreneur at the same time? Uh, thank you. Thank you. Very nice to be part of the panel. Um, and yes, these are challenging times, uh, as we probably all know, uh, in different ways. And I, I mean, I, I work from home most of the time, even though I don't have my kids here. But now I have my kids at home all the time as well. So, of course, it's more challenging. And, and for now, I just shut the door and I told them to try to be as quiet as possible on the other side but maybe you'll hear some some noise but it's just my eight-year-old my and my ten-year-old let's just hope they don't start fighting <laughs> um but um but my i'm a, um, as we already heard so i'm a parent uh, but i'm also a researcher and i work in computer science education uh, so i've been working with questions on digital tools, digital competence, um, and learning and teaching for uh, 15 years. And before this crisis started, I was just about to get my hands dirty with a, a larger project that I have on evaluating the digital competence of teachers, uh, principals, uh, education leaders, and students in the Swedish-speaking parts of Finland. Um, let's just say I'm happy that I didn't get started before, this happened because I think in fall, hopefully, when I get start, when I will get started, uh, we will have a completely different um, uh, point of departure for my research because, of course, everybody is now doing quite a lot on with digital tools, etc., that they weren't doing uh, just a couple of weeks or a month ago. Um, so, in this presentation, I'm uh, I'll try to give some uh, some perspective on what uh, the new situation means in terms of being uh, a student, uh, a teacher, uh, a parent, and also maybe a researcher. Uh, so if we go to the slides, so um, 
I, when I give my presentations, I usually just use uh, images, so you won't see a single word in these. But I'll try to try to uh, explain what I mean by the images I've chosen. Um, so this um, uh, this picture I, I chose because I think that. Uh, the situation that we have, different perspectives. So we have the same situation, but we all look at it from a, from our own point of view, be it then a student or a teacher, uh, a parent or a researcher. Um, so we all look at it, the same situation, but we all have our own starting point when we look at it, but also we see different things. So if we move to the following slide, I think that the most important thing that we need to have there is clarity. And with clarity here, it means that we should have clarity for everybody, regardless of who is involved in this process. So if it's a teacher, if it's the student, if it's the parent, uh, everybody should know what is expected from them. And of course, since this happened very quickly in Finland as well, uh, the decision was made basically on Monday and on Wednesday, everybody started uh, staying at home. Um, so getting to clarity in more or less 24 hours uh, is not that easy, but I think that the teachers uh, did a very remarkable job in both getting through to their to the children uh, in understanding that okay, so this is this is how it's going to be now. We don't know for how long, but this is how it will will have to be this spring. And the same thing for for parents as well that we had some kind of um, view on okay, so what will be demanded of us? Uh, so the clarity clarity part there, what's expected uh, from the st student, what's expected from the parents, and also how should then this all be accomplished. Um, so if we move on to the following slide, please. Um, and of course, one of the biggest things then that, that came, into the, uh, came into question was, okay, so how should we do this? And um, since I work a lot with teachers, uh, there has been a lot of discussion on, on, of course, the tools. What tools should we be using? And I think that the first days, and even up to this day, uh, there's a lot of new material posted online, and uh, different tools are shared. And as we already heard, Matt also talking about uh, different companies are opening up their services. And uh, in the beginning, people were very happy and they were like, yes, now we get to try all of these things. But then I think that at some point also they realized as a teach, both as the teacher and, and, uh, and the parents as well, that, hey, let's just keep it simple to begin with. Let's just try something that works so that we can get the things that Johanny was also talking about, the routines, the, the rules in place, the structure of the day. Uh, because for instance, if I look at my own work, I'm I'm a researcher, so I should be doing quite a lot of writing, uh, but writing with two kids at home uh, who need my help every now and then isn't that easy. So trying to find out a way on getting that combination to work takes time. Uh, also, I'm an entrepreneur and I do a lot of public speaking. Uh, and of course, uh, all trips were cancelled or the public speaking events were cancelled. So I also really need to rethink that. How will I now uh, how will my entrepreneur do, or how, how will my, my company, what kind of services will that now um, offer to my clients when I can't do the, those trips that we had agreed on? And that also takes time and it takes concentration. Um, so I was very thankful as a parent when during the first week and also well, maybe two, almost two, uh, one a week and a half at least, the tools that the teachers decided to use were very common, they were familiar, both for me and for the kids. And uh, I, I was very thankful for that because it helped us create some kind of structure around our day and not too much time went into actually learning about the tools that they were supposed to use. I now know that teachers are planning on, especially since we now, first it was, the, the plan was for this to continue until mid-April last night we found out that it will go on until mid-May in Finland. Uh, so I know that many teachers are now thinking of, okay, so how could we do more? What else could we take into our uh, repertoire of tools or things that we do with the kids? Um, and at this point, I think that that's more, that's very, that's fine because we already have now the structure for our day uh, and we can 
try to do something new. But I think the less is more, uh, less channels to work with, uh, keep it simple, etc. That's a good strategy, at least in the beginning. Thanks, Linda. We so will we come back with, uh, with, with some of the topics and this matter as well, but to, to, to somehow in a nutshell, with your experience, with our people watching here, what are the, what are the main, main uh, one, two things that, uh, that you have learned and you're suggesting us to do? What I've learned as a parent, you mean? Yes. Yes, as a parent. Um, well, uh, one of them is to be to take it easy and that's one of my slides as well to try to take it easy and not to be too 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 hard on yourself or on the on the kids either because this is completely and not on the teachers either so don't be too hard on yourself don't be too hard on the kids and don't be too hard on the teachers because this is new for all of us so it's a totally new situation for for everybody involved and um and I think that that will help us get, get through a lot if we if we try to try to keep it keep it as simple as possible. Uh, and the other thing is that well, this this slide maybe also gives that away a bit, but uh, trying to keep in contact. So we are not we are physically distancing from each other. Not the social distancing might not be the best best uh, best word for for what we are actually doing. So we are physically staying apart, but we should still be. Uh, part of a community and trying to stay together online and as I've heard with I my kids are in touch with their teacher every day uh, in different ways and with different teachers and I'm very happy for that uh, the teachers are also in contact with me as a parent which I also like today one of the, the teachers called me after after work and asked how he was just calling around all the all the parents in the class and uh, and just wanting to to talk, not just sending sending messages uh, back and forth, but also getting to talk about our experiences so far. This was very um, very good. Thank you, Linda, for your overview and uh, and experience. As I said, we will probably come back with a few questions of uh, of this matter and what you have learned in Finland as well. We need to now move to our next speaker, uh, Birgit Lau, the CEO of Foundation in Nova here in Tallinn. We're glad that Birgit, you are here with us. So, how would you take it away? How to support children in distance learning? Well, good evening, everyone. Um, first of all, I would uh, like to say that uh, uh, it's great to hear that the concerns and actually the choice are pretty much the same. Uh, it doesn't matter are you from Finland or from Estonia or from from other country. Uh, those concerns we are being testing with as a parent, as a teacher, as a headmaster, as a, a normal frontline worker are pretty much the same. Uh, so for me, so I have the challenge to be the time master of a three-year-old and a ten-year-old. But since uh, in Innova we do work in everyday basis closely together with teachers, uh, doing the teacher training, curriculum development, testing, um, and uh, study-related counseling. So we hear the questions from the parents' side, uh, from the people side as well, because they do call us. They are concerned what is going on. Uh, we hear the concerns about teaching from the teacher side and also from the headmaster side. So what kind of decisions we should make now. And I've actually gathered some of the tips uh, which firstly can be used for the teachers, especially for teachers who, who are teaching uh, children from age to 12, because those teachers, if you move forward with the slide, uh, because uh, uh, those teachers are uh, dealing with children who not necessarily know how to learn, and they are not uh, so self-efficient in learning, so they need much more support and of course, the only support what is handy and available is from the baron. So I think uh, what we should really uh, think through in upcoming weeks or months uh, with remote learning is the question uh, how to move the teaching from the parent side to actually back to the teacher side, what was going on in the classroom. And then again, how to motivate 
and support the child to become more independent and reliable towards, uh, towards learning. So if you can go on with the slide. So a few tips. I know it's not really famous tip, uh, for the ninth graders who want to do their exams and for the um, 12th graders who, who are still waiting to, for their exams. But those who can afford it, please target on the repetition. Because uh, if we start to repeat subjects or topics, the child can feel more success because they already know something and uh, the, the tasks they go through are more familiar. Uh, one of the advices we are giving is to emphasize more generic competences. Of course, we have the digital competence and technological competence present now because the devices and tools we use. But we also should focus on communication, uh, citizenship, citizenship uh, learning to learn, uh, value-based competences, depending what is in your curriculum. So those should be emphasized at the moment. And of course, integrated learning. Um, I think um, just learning one subject like mathematics is can, you, can work in a classroom, but if we combine them, for example, mathematics with music or art with uh, foreign languages, uh, the results be, can be quite uh, different and of course challenging for the students. So if we move forward. Group work. Uh, we have heard that this social um, bonding, uh, especially in between younger children is very important. So this is missing at the moment. Uh, so if teachers and also parents can emphasize this kind of method more, that would be uh, more useful for children. And um, as uh, Johanny said, that the teachers they like to team up and have a feedback. How how was how was it going within a week or within two weeks? But children uh, they also need this kind of feedback. So teaching is also giving feedback, and they need it directly from the teacher. So do invest times, teachers. In giving online feedback, it's much valued. Uh, if we move forward, please. Uh, again, uh, consider reducing learning content. Uh, as we now know that this situation, remote learning won't be over within two weeks, probably within not even within a month. We should start to ask as teachers where do we want to end up with the school year? Um, whether the school year would end in mid-May, for example, or will continue till the beginning of June, or will end as planned in the next week of June in Estonia. So where do we want to be when the school year ends? And that might give another perspective, longer perspective. So also to decide, should we push stronger or let it loose a little bit? And uh, I asked teachers, there was a set, like, like Linda said before, that um, maybe there's no not big challenge of introducing new learning environments, but let the, let the, the students uh, introduce the new learning environments. You can't even believe, as a teacher, what are the things and tools and gadgets that the students are using. So they might teach a teacher a lesson here. The final slide. So personal support, um, I think, uh, well, Mert also mentioned that there are some great new uh, tools, devices uh, to be introduced. But I think as, as a parent and as a professional who works with uh, study counselors uh, every day, we actually, as a parent, do you see now how our, our children are learning? What are their personal needs? and where does this learning actually lack and where they do need the support. Uh, if the learning was supported in a classroom, it's definitely um, needs much more support at the moment. So if you feel that you don't really manage anymore, do seek help. 
there, there are professionals uh, around. Uh, don't be ashamed to ask that you don't really know how to teach your child or it has a, a personal need, study need or uh, some other needs. So do ask for help. And the final thing is, I think it's about the cooperation again. Um, when I was listening to other speakers, I realized that actually I've never felt and, and seen this amount of kindness among us uh, and such a big positive power. Uh, we know that it's a, a, it's a forced situation, but I haven't really seen uh, like any movements or attitudes uh, which are negative. So I would like to keep this kindness and openness and, and uh, the feeling or the ability to help each other uh, which would continue from here till the, till forever. So that would be my, my last message. Thank you. Thank you, Birgit, for this good overview. Uh, the distance learning now has been happening in Estonia for about two weeks. What are the main things we have learned in the process so far? Uh, I think so far we have, uh, as from the state perspective, I would say that we, we have been doing a great work before because Estonia is a digital nation, uh, not two, from two weeks back, but in, in, uh, we started this uh, movement in education two years back. So I think uh, it gives us the grounds and uh, sort of like uh, uh, calmness that we have done great things. And I think that maybe another uh, solution is that um, that uh, despite of, of the environment where the learning takes place, uh, the learning goals are really uh, right ones. So as Marily said, that uh, we still follow our steps. So uh, we don't really feel that uh, we, we have some, some kind of setbacks now. Good. We have a few questions from the crowd who are watching this webinar right now. What might be the drawbacks of remote learning in the long term, maybe for parents? Linda, maybe you can comment this on, based on what you were sharing also. Well, the drawbacks are that we, we can't do what we are supposed to do during the day. We don't get this, this full time of actually doing our work. So I think that's the, that's the biggest drawback. But, but I also, also think that we could probably, since we've, we've found the routines for the children, uh, we probably also can find uh, routines for us as parents. So when the children will get, get, more, get more and more better on actually uh, taking most children can do this, of course, not everybody, but take more responsibility for their own learning, then we will also get more, get more time for actually taking care of our jobs. But of course, in the long run, the big problem, if we were to just start doing it like this, that's the, that's the biggest problem that I see. And also that, um, I mean, it, it becomes attention as well before, uh, because if you think of, for instance, one parent working at home and taking care of everything at home, uh, and the other one then being at the workplace. So then there will might be also tensions between the different partners in the family, of course, if, if one has to both do his or her own job and then take care of the kids and everything at home at the same time as well. But I think that we will lear we'll learn a lot from this and I hope that we'll take uh, many of the things that we've learned now from this process also uh, with us to the post-corona time as well. Marily is a headmaster. Would you like to comment this question? Yes, I think uh, my biggest uh, concern as also a special needs uh, teacher is that uh, we are really hard, uh, trying really hard right now to get everybody to stay inside. Uh, we have campaigns about it, but at, um, uh, afterwards uh, it can be also a problem to get everybody outside again because we have had many children who are scared of coming to school and we have like drawn them by one subject or by oh come to eat to school we have good food and oh go to that lesson now to go to that lesson so i think the socialization part is maybe the biggest concern i have would you birgit like to add something for this is a quite essential question yes i think um, uh, if we try to picture what which the, the learning process would look like without the classroom being present. Let's say the situation lasts forever, I think. Uh, and also what we wished for 
and what is our strategic goal aim for 2035 is to have a personalized learning possibilities well now it's here um, and i think if we practice it day by day uh, we we uh, we are facing more challenges we are not aware of so i think first what linda said the parents who really have to help uh, children to learn especially in younger ages and uh, and the balance between the work and and supporting their children and uh, the situation with uh, with the students with special needs because the parents are not the special needs workers so this might be a troubling sense and also how to start with uh, e-learning uh, let's say when your child enters school uh, next uh, year so how to start with introducing the digital devices so how to get on on on, on a train actually with remote learning that would be most challenging from my perspective. What about G, uh, GDPR of all different platforms? Uh, how does that fit in with this distance learning? Is there anything we have to point out for our parents, teachers or pupils as well? Mert, maybe you can comment this one. Yes, uh, GDPR is uh, of course uh, very important. Uh, if you talk about GDPR, then we're talking about uh, general data protection uh, like legal side of it from the European uh, Union and uh, of course all companies uh, that uh, produce solutions and also governments uh, need to uh, to follow these uh, demands uh, that are coming from the law and otherwise they are not allowed to operate in the European Union territory so uh, all of the solutions that uh, have been mentioned in the listing that uh, we looked at before are, are meeting these uh, very strict uh, privacy guidelines. And uh, uh, if you're now going uh, outside of European Union looking for solutions, then uh, just keep in mind that uh, they don't have to follow the European Union guidelines. Um, uh, only um, uh, the small companies are usually uh, not able to um, to make sure that, uh, that the, if you are coming from the European Union, that uh, you would get the right level of service. Uh, usually the larger companies, uh, corporations, uh, if they offer their services inside of European Union territory, they also uh, are meeting the requirements uh, of, uh, of GDPR. Marilis, you mentioned some platforms that your schools, uh, your school is used to communicate. Is there anything you would suggest for other schools or maybe even outside of Estonia? Uh, I think the most important uh, thing is to understand that uh, nobody has uh, nothing at home uh, except the computers and the laptops uh, and the padlets we are letting or giving them. So uh, no need to send uh, doc uh, files or PDF files. So uh, you need to think uh, that nobody has nothing. So how you can get your links through and the information through. So our basic thing we use is uh, Google Docs. Uh, everybody can open it. Uh, uh, although with the phone you have problems uh, uploading uh, documents or downloading. So you need to understand that you do need a device. And if a school is offering, uh, uh, to rent out, then you should use it. So we have, uh, or, although we have been here for two weeks, we are still getting parents, oh, I don't have a device. And we are saying we have loads of devices out for rent. Tallinn Town has organized it that you can lend them, uh, get them. So uh, that's the thing we have to uh, make parents understand. And we are also using Clanbeat, as uh, Mart mentioned. Uh, it's really more of a teacher-centered uh, communication platform, but we have used it already for two years, so I really recommend it. And at the same time, uh, we are using also uh, Kahoot uh, and uh, uh, Slido, and maybe then the Zoom and the Google Meets are the places for video conferences. But at our school website, uh, we have listed down all the things and platforms we are using. So if teachers and parents or school heads want to check it out, then you can go to the our school website and we have a different like a new menu there distance learning that where all the information about our distance learning is there. Johanne, would you like to comment also this topic? There were very good points from Marilise and, and uh, I would also recommend uh, making sure that everybody has the access. Uh, so not limiting uh, to a certain um, 
a service provider, for example. So, and then um, also um, the question is still, I'd say, uh, for all of us, kind of to answer how to uh, share the information and, and communicate that out. Uh, where to find uh, help when needed and uh, hopefully everybody at home has at least the first uh, point access point to go to and ask further from there uh, when they need some uh, assistance and uh, i'd say or, or the school where your kids are attending that's the first place to start from this is all for today thank you for tuning in and we hope to see you at our future seminars as well. Our next webinar is taking place on next Thursday, April 9th, 2020, at the same time. The topic of that seminar will be how Estonia organized distance learning on the national level. For, for more info on future webinars, follow us on social media at Education Nation and join our open Facebook group, Remote Learning Education Nation, where you can also suggest on topic for future webinars. And at this point, I would like to thank all of our speakers today. Thank you for joining us in this interesting topic, in these interesting times. And uh, take care. And also, all of you watching us, take care, stay healthy, stay safe. Thank you for watching. See you in a week.